Good day, my name is Randy Armstrong. I'm the Chief Architect for Sparhawk Software. Welcome to part two of the Global Discovery Server demonstration. Uh, I will be uh, discussing the multicast uh, discovery and auto configuration features in the um, that are part of the uh, uh, GDS. So this sort of gets back to the context diagram which I discussed in much more detail in, in part one and I'm going to be demonstrating how we can how the GDS can populate itself it can go out on the network and discover what's out there and um, and automatically fill in fill in the servers that it's aware of so one of the quickest ways for the GDS to populate itself is to simply provide a list of known hosts to the GDS so this would be a sort of administration function and this list could come from a source such as Active Directory where where the GDS goes out and simply enumerates the hosts or or it could be a, a simple list in an XML configuration file the specification doesn't define where this list where this list comes from but if the, once the GDS has these host names uh, it can then go and periodically call find servers on the LDS and create on each one of those hosts and it can create uh, records for all the servers it finds on that host and uh, there would have to be some GDS specific logic to handle the removal and cleanup of records if a server appears to go away after a certain period of time but what this does is this through a very simple mechanism you're going to be able to quickly have a your have your data have your system adapt to uh, changing network connections as as new nodes are installed or as uh, as servers are installed or removed from your system the GDS database will be updated accordingly or even in the case of where you have machines are moved to different locations and potentially given different host names you could have the application URI can then discover that uh, can be used to discover that that a uh, that a particular application has moved so this diagram here is just sort of showing you the sort of the complete process is where the GDS goes out does find ser the server registers itself with the LP LDS which is a which is a um, uh, uh, a well-defined part of the specification. Uh, the GDS comes along, calls find servers, updates its database. A client can later say, okay, uh, I'm going to find that server and then it's going to connect to it. The other uh, interesting part of part 12 is we've incorporated a multicast discovery protocol into the specification. Um, there's a lot of complexity involved in doing multicast in terms of if you the, the simplest approach if you just it's easy it's easy to write something very simple that will end up flooding your network with with uh, UDP packets so we wanted to base it on an existing standard and we ended up choosing multicast DNS which is an RFC uh, it's, it's a published RFC now and it's widely used in the Apple and the Linux world it's uh, not so widely used in Windows but it, its virtue is it was a really simple protocol to implement and it makes it really easy to put this right down onto embedded devices and but in order to sort of make it easier for UA application developers we've hidden the entire uh, MDNS protocol with the LDS. So you've got this LDS sitting on sitting on your machine and it will be dealing with the MDNS protocol and the clients just need to be able, be, be able to call this new method find servers on network. Right now clients are already able to call should already be able to call for the find servers me method on on LDSs. So this is just a, a little diagram showing you the process when you're using multicast discovery, uh, where you've got these LDSs are are basically talking to each other and, and sending out notices to each other, and and so a client can then query its local LDS and find out the location of all the servers that are on the network, on the local LAN, and then go out and connect. Uh, with multicast discovery what you're what you're doing is you're only it's only really going to work on a on a local LAN um, 
there's there's different there's slight there's you can in some cases you can you can get it to go through a switch but for the most part you you have to assume as soon as you get onto the public internet multicast discovery is not going to work so this is this is only going to work this this will be really powerful where you're sitting there and you're plugging a new device in you've got you've taken your hardware out of the box it's got a ua server you plug it in you you've got your little you've got your technician's laptop and when the device boots up you see that new server is there and you know exactly what ip it was assigned and you can now connect to it and configure it via the gds using some of the mechanisms i described in the first video so now in order to sort of demonstrate those features i'm going to go back to the Um, discovery dialog that I showed you first in the part one and what I'm showing here is this local network what this local network when I select the local network here I'm going to the LDS and I'm calling that find servers on network uh, function and I'm getting back a list of all of all servers that are that are known on that network so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to start a couple servers on this machine And it takes a little bit of time. And you can see that those servers have now appeared in this list. And from the point of view of the client, it's doing the same call. It's just because the servers come up, they register with the LDS, they, they, uh, they get, um, they get uh, automatically announced, and, and it then gets put into this list. Now, the other part of this is that okay so so we've got this multicast it's going on in the LAN allows allows clients to quickly discover things um, discover servers uh, independent of any GDS this works there's the GDS doesn't even enter into this picture at all however what we wanted it to do is we want the GDS to be able to automatically discover the servers that are running on other nodes. And so what I've done is I've pre-configured the um, GDS with knowledge of the Cobalt machine. So when I uh, started up those servers, there was a thread that was periodically inside the GDS is going out to the Cobalt machine asking, are there any servers? Are there any servers? And it could be doing this multiple times. And you should see that this list is longer than the list that it was that I that was uh, there when we did the part one demo because I've just started up these two servers and the GDS has discovered these servers it's added them automatically to the database and you see this here it's got the capabilities are set to no this is a special this is a special code indicating that this was an automatically added server and there was no information available about the capabilities and this that those things have to be updated that if you want capabilities information it's going to have to be updated manually by the administrator now the part 12 of the specification is actually the next version of the specification has introduced some some changes to the to the services that allow uh, servers to actually register their capabilities with the LDS so servers that are aware of part 12 and the GDS and all of these features will actually will, will tell the GDS will tell the it will tell the LDS about their capabilities which means the GDS will have correct information when it discovers these servers automatically So to recap, what I've done is I've shown you with this dialog how you can create a simple, with this, with this GDS agent application, how you can create a simple dialog that allows you to discover, use multicast to discover local, local uh, servers on your local LAN. And I've shown you how through configuration on the GDS, you can, the GDS can automatically update its database based on servers that it discovers on the LAN.
or basically wherever it's told to go look for servers.